Hi, my name is Taron and welcome to a British audio file and my review of the SMSL M300 Mark II DAC. Wow, that's a mouthful. Now, this is the kind of DAC that retails on Amazon. I think the last time I checked, the M300 was £213. It's the kind of DAC that people buy typically because of the specifications. There's no doubt that you seem to get an awful lot for your money. So if you take a look at the inputs, you've got Bluetooth, optical, coax, USB. You're well served with the outputs as well. They've got the RCA connections that you'd expect, but unusually at this price point, it's also got the balanced XLR connections. It's not like they've cheaped out on the inside either. There's lots of audio grade discrete components inside and the decoding, the DAC chip itself is one of the best on the planet in the AKM 4497. And because of that DAC chip, it will decode pretty much every high-res file that you throw at it. PCM files up to 768 and 32 bits, if anyone's got files of that resolution, and DSD files up to 512. Now the question is, is this at £213 all the DAC that you really need, or is it too good to be true? Let's take a closer look. Now, SMSL is a Chinese-based company that's been around for a little over 10 years. They mainly sell DACs and amplifiers and other audio components, which are relatively inexpensive through Amazon, but also a couple of other retailers. If you have a look at this M300, you'll see it has an aluminium CNC casing. Uh, there's no kind of cheap plastic here, and that helps with shielding and reducing noise. It has a glass front, uh, which has a useful one and a half inch LCD display. There's two buttons that allow you to switch the DAC on and off and select the source. And if you press and hold the buttons, they'll also allow you to control the volume up and down. Switching to the rear, you can see the XLR balance connections and the RCA single ended connections. And you have the inputs that you connect for your Bluetooth, your optical and coax are combined in this kind of mini connector. And there's also a micro USB input as well, which obviously you can use to connect to a computer or a phone. Pretty comprehensive then in terms of the input and output connections. Now the remote control gives you access to a whole bunch of features, including some degree of customization. Of course, you can switch between the inputs, which are coaxial, optical, Bluetooth, and USB. You've got six PCM filters, sharp, slow, short, sharp, short, slow, super slow, and low dispersion. I found that PCM filter one sounded the best. That's the sharp filter. The others all seem to lose quite a bit in terms of clarity, with the exception of filter number five. That's the super slow filter. That did lose a touch of clarity, but also added a bit of warmth. So most of the time I listen to the sharp filter. Occasionally I switch to the super slow filter. It was nice to have the option to choose. Now there are two DSD filters, narrow and wide. There's pre mode, which allows you to disable the volume control and run the DAC purely as a DAC. Sound color and high sound allow you to make subtle alterations to the sound character and they work within the DSP engine of the AKM chip. I found that sound color one sounded the best, sound color two was warmer, and sound color three was warmer still. And you can also choose between different colors for the font. Taking a look at the internals, the overall design and specification of the parts for a circa 200 pound DAC is highly impressive. There's Japanese NDK clock crystals, one that deals with the 44.1 signal and its multiples, another one that deals with the 48 kilohertz signal and its multiples. There's a second generation XMOS processor inside that deals with the USB interface. It's capable of handling PCM files, as I mentioned, up to 32-bit depth and 768 
kilohertz sample rate and DSD files times 512. The AK4497EQ DAT chip is from their top tier. As far as I'm aware, the only one that's better is the 4499. And its specifications are impressive. It has a signal to noise ratio, which is down at 128 dBs and the total harmonic distortion and noise figure is down at 116 dBs. If you look at the right hand side, all those little blue rectangles um, are discrete surface mount capacitors and resistors in the output stage and that's impressive for this price point. The output devices themselves are from Texas Instruments, they're LM4562 op amps and there's no doubt that you get an awful lot for your £213. Those of you who think that electronic component burning isn't a thing should buy this product. The reality is that when I took this out of the box and first connected it up, it sounded hard, it sounded brittle, and I thought I'd made a mistake and may have to send it back. Thankfully, after a number of hours, the sound kind of settled down, opened up quite nicely. The overall sonic characteristic of the M300 is that it is fast, it's clean, and it has a very even tonal balance. Sound familiar? Well, it's very similar to the comments I made about the IOTA VX SA3 integrated amplifier that I reviewed a few weeks ago. But be under no delusion, the SMSL DAC is far better than the DAC inside the IOTA VX SA3. It's basically got much cleaner bass, there's none of that leanness in the mid-range and the overall sound stage is wider. So that got me thinking, people considering buying the IOTA VX SA3 for £400 could consider buying the PA3 power amplifier for £300 and then buy this SMSL M300 DAC for £213. So that's a £513 outlay as opposed to a £400 outlay for the integrated. Now, as I mentioned in my review of the IOTA VX stack, I think the PA3 sounds a little bit better than the SA3 as a pure amplifier, and there's no doubt that this SMSL DAC is far better than the DAC that you get inside the IOTA VX. Um, you also get USB connections, which I think are quite useful which you don't get with the integrated. So I think for £513, that extra outlay is worthwhile and in terms of features as well as sonically, it's the way I would go. So what about the SMSL M300 purely in sonic terms? Well, the reality is that five years ago, I'd have been highly impressed with this DAC. And don't get me wrong, I still think it's a very good sounding DAC. I'm just acutely aware that the competition at this 300 200 pound price range is very very stiff and there's a number of very good products out there so the thing i had to compare it to here was a cord mojo now cord mojo has a lot less features and retails for 400 pounds at a higher price point but in terms of sonically this is where the sml showed its limitations the cord is a much bigger fuller richer sounding DAC. Um, you get a wider sound stage, you get better separation from uh, between instruments. Now the SMSL has basically good sound stage left to right, the sound stage on the chord is bigger, but you also get the sound stage depth uh, with the chord which you don't get with the SMSL. And if your system is up to it and revealing enough, the chord will kind of reward you with some finer kind of richer textures. So you get kind of nice little decays and a little bit more kind of meat on the bone, a little bit more textural information to instruments, which you don't get with the SMSL. It's much more matter of fact in its presentation and you're kind of more aware that you're listening to recording rather than the real thing. You can suspend disbelief with the chord a little bit more easily. So that's where I kind of landed with it sonically.
It's remarkable what you get for a couple of hundred pounds these days. A fully featured DAC with good quality components on the inside and a whole host of connections on the outside and a remote control. I wouldn't have even thought it possible five, ten years ago. But the reality is that this is a very competitive marketplace. There are DACs at this price point from people like Shit Audio, iFi, Project, Audio Lab, and a whole host of others. As for the SML M300, it's a good sounding DAC, but it's not an exceptional sounding DAC. And as a result, it gets a very solid recommended from this channel. I still think in terms of sound quality, the gold standard for what is achievable from affordable DACs goes to the Cord Mojo. I know it's a pain in the backside, quite frankly, to live with in desktop mode. And it's primarily designed for um, headphone listening, but sonically, I still think it represents the gold standard. It'll be Interesting to see in time if that mantle passes on to something else. The SML M300 is something that you can buy with confidence if you're looking for a fully featured DAC around the £200 price point. And that's it for this review. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button, please share it, and if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. But for today, for now, a British audiophile. Signing off.